welcome to the show again. I have a very special guest joining me today. She is one of the most acclaimed musical artists coming out of India. She's traveled the world over, enchanting millions of people with her wonderful voice. She's often referred to as the torchbearer for the Lalguri musical tradition. And in 2013, she was nominated for her work in Life of Pi in the, at the Academy Awards. Um, she's of course none other than Mrs. Bombay Jayshree. Mrs. Jayshree, thanks for joining us today on Aussie Indian TV. Thank you for having me. It's my privilege to be here. Thank you very much. Can I start on a um, slightly somber note? Earlier in the week, we had the passing of Lal Gurisa, um, the great Carnatic legend, actually music, world musical legend really, isn't he? And he was of course your guru and your mentor. Uh, what are your thoughts on him and, and the legacy he leaves behind? Um, I think a few souls that God sends to this earth to show us his beauty, that is God's beauty. And one of such uh, souls is uh, Sri Lal Guri and I feel blessed that he accepted me as a student. Uh, millions of uh, lovers of music who love him as a person, his music, millions of artists who try to follow from the inspiration that he offers through music. Personally, as a, for a student like me, he, he has been an epitome of what we call the Guru, which means he's been my father, my mother, my, my friend, uh, my philosopher, guide, everything that um, uh, one would need from. And, and through these roles that he played, he taught me music and the depth of music and to make music so much part of my life. And that's the reason that I'm here today. That's the reason I sing and I perform. Mm -hmm. Of course, in Indian classical art, the guru sishya parampara and the relationship a guru shares with the sishya is is very deep and it, it's a meaningful relationship, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the relationship between a mother and a child. So you almost imbibe how the guru uh, uh, lives, stay with the guru, imbibe his qualities as a human being. Um, what he does to perfect the music that he tries to inspire us with. So it's it's about sharing a bond that, that is so deep that cannot be explained with mm -hmm. uh, words. And uh, one has to be very fortunate to, in these times, to still have that relationship with. Mm -hmm. the, and that's why I consider myself so blessed that we are in a time when so much can be done or so much is perhaps done through technology and through other forms, inanimate forms of learning, mm. um, Indian art. And uh, very few of us are still blessed to have the mm. privilege and honor of being with our Guru and imbibing all that he has to offer. That's wonderful. Um, of course, Bombay Jayshree is a household name in the mu Indian musical community the world over. Then Life of Pi came along and that Academy Award nomination. And now you've become a household name the world over. How has the last six months been? Must be an absolute roller coaster ride. Yes, it was, but um, uh, due to the grace of God and again the blessings of my guru, I, I I took it as it came. In the beginning, it was very overwhelming, but I think I represent so many great Indian masters who have taken this music across borders, across boundaries, much, much, much before I was even born. And I'm the chosen one to hold the bait in this time, but I think it's a huge recognition for Indian music and it feels wonderful that the world is able to look at Indian music as much as especially Hollywood is looking at Indian music more intently, thanks to the film, thanks to Ang Lee and Michael Dana who chose me to sing for the movie. Just on Ang Lee and Michael Dana, I read somewhere Ang Lee would go down to the detail where he was even looking at the lyrics and suggesting changes to the lyrics of a language he actually doesn't understand. How was that experience? I think um, aesthetically he's such a complete person and in that sense he, he understands sounds, he understands emotions and most importantly he knows what he wants for uh, his movie. He knows what he wants to convey and probably how he should do it. So the language or an alien kind of music in that sense, Carnatic music, or a singer who he didn't know before he called me, didn't matter. We we were just small tools for him to achieve what he did with, with great finesse and 
perfection. So he actually handheld me to uh, write what I wrote, sing the way I did. And at one point he told me, I don't want a child to sleep because you sang a lullaby. You must remember that a child sleeps not because he's sleepy, but because he feels safe. So this is how deeply he went into conveying what he wanted to do through me. That's absolutely beautiful. Well, I can just say I, I was enchanted the first time I heard that song and, and that certainly put me to sleep for a few weeks in a row. I was just having it on. Um, just moving on, of course, you started music much before, much before 2013 and it was, of course, Indian classical music in Carnatic, uh, in the Carnatic style. What really inspired you about Carnatic music and what intrigued you about that style to really put so much effort into it? Um, I was born into a household that sang Carnatic music all the time. Both my grandfathers, both my parents sang music all the time, taught music all the time. Mm -hmm. So I was like a fish swimming in water. So if I would look at it from another side, it was all around me, but it took me some time to realize that I'm really blessed and to, for me to understand the value, I had to go to many teachers. Mm -hmm. So I was born there and I imbibed it naturally because that was the environment. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing that I knew most than anything else in life. But to love it, to understand it and regard it as deeply as I do it today where I cannot think for a moment without having the music with me. I owe it completely to all my teachers and especially to my Guru Sri Lalgudi for, for giving me this um, direction in life which I have mm -hmm. today. Well, just on that, you, you mentioned there was a lot of hard work at the younger ages and I've seen a lot of friends and I've heard a lot of stories about children sort of being forced by their parents between the ages of say 10 to 15 to go to music class every week and practice and once they get past that barrier, they're actually really indebted to their parents for making them go. Uh, do you have any advice for our youngsters watching who are, the, who are learning music and, and who sort of, they're going because their parents are being for, for sort of forcing them to go but but ultimately, there's like the ones who do go past that phase, they're so indebted to their parents for doing that. Yeah, I can promise all those who are learning music and are being forced that at the end of the tunnel, there's, there's so much spring and so much light and mm. beauty and fresh air. But it does require someone, a parent or a teacher, to gently nod or push or mm. even persuade because this is a serious art. This is an art that can appear very boring. This is an art form that can make you feel very lonely because your peers and friends don't identify with it. This is also an art that requires a tremendous amount of perseverance, internalization, and concentration to be able to discover something on your own because pretty much everything is done by the masters. And at one point you might feel, what am I doing that someone didn't do? Why am I here? What can I add to? Can this be part of my everyday life? Can I spend a lot of time doing this? There are so many things to do. There's pressures of study. I have to keep whatever my examinations. I have to be proficient in some system of education. But the most important thing is not to aim to practice to be a professional, mm -hmm. but to consider, and I really request students of music uh, to keep at it because at every point in life, if you need a friend, that can be music. Because sometimes you don't want to listen to somebody say anything. You don't want to say anything to somebody. You don't want someone to, you don't expect an answer. And that's when you can just switch on music. You can sing. Mm -hmm. And such moments are waiting around the corner for all of us. And I think music can be such a special friend. That's a wonderful advice, I think. Uh, we, and there you go, viewers, and all the young children watching. You've heard it from an absolute legend of Indian classical music. Make music your friend. I think that's a wonderful tip. Just moving on to your work across the world in terms of uh, c collaboration with different musical artists. You've done a lot of that in, in, in recent years. How have you found that experience? Have you really enjoyed it? Is it a lot different to, say, singing at a, at a Kacheri in the Chennai music season? Uh, how have you found that experience? Um, there is so much more to do within the framework of the art that we grew up learning and perfecting, in my case, Carnatic music. But as a student of this music and 
an avid uh, rasika, if I can call myself. I'm looking for that little new thing because I have a curious mind mm -hmm. wants to experiment, that wants to learn through the eyes of another performer who has uh, perfected another art form, which could be Hindustani music or it could be Western music or Bharatanatyam. And to see the same art through their eyes, through their abhinaya or their ideas is a huge learning. And every time I try to perform with somebody, I come back feeling richer as a human being. I come back feeling humbled as a musician that there's so much more in the world which we can't be part of completely, but mm -hmm. at least a glimpse of that we can see whenever it's possible. Wonderful. Is there any particular artists or styles of music that you really enjoyed working with? Um, all of them have um, taught me a lot. All of them have given me so much joy. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe in particular, uh, Pandit Ronu Majumdar, with whom I performed the Hindustani and Karnatic Jugalbandi, he's mm -hmm. a flautist who's, uh, we've grown up together in Mumbai and at many times we, we learned from the same gurus. We started our careers in studios at the same time. So there's a special bond there that uh, we're able to bring to the music when we come together. Um, similarly, for about the past 10 years, I have had the privilege of uh, singing the compositions of Eero Hameniemi, a very celebrated, renowned Finnish composer. Uh, in his case, he is a pianist, mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful composer of Western music. Mm -hmm. What's special about him is he understands Indian classical music very well. He understands Tamil classic literature. So when he works on compositions and invites me to sing, again, it's a very special feeling. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't go to say that I, do, I don't enjoy with many yeah, others. But sure. I think these two yeah. really have a great impact on my musical. You were just in Helsinki recently as well, weren't you? Is that related to that? Exactly. Uh, I had the opportunity to perform with the Helsinki Philharmonic, a, a hundred um, musician ensemble, wow. and the work of Eero Hameniemi again. That's amazing. Um, what about film music? You've, you've done a lot of films as well. And of course, now you've done Life of Pi. And I'm guessing you get a lot of offers. How do you be selective about that? Is it hard? Um, to be honest, I don't get too many offers. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I get very few. And mm -hmm. all what I um, get somehow seems to suit my personality and the music mm -hmm. that I can offer. Sure. Um, and I have grown up listening to full film music because uh, my my house, my mother especially, uh, was very open and she had a broad mind that mm -hmm. any kind of music that touched the soul has to be heard, listened to and mm -hmm. perhaps learnt. And so mm -hmm. she would send me to train in different forms of music and that's how I grew up learning, appreciating and identifying yeah. beautiful music of cinema of the 60s and 70s, Hindi and Marathi and Bengali, mm -hmm. predominantly. And when I moved to Chennai, my, my revered guru had the same opinion that music is music and we create these boundaries. Like if you look at the, if you look at the earth from the space, you don't see the lines between countries. It's what we draw. Sure. And he would say that even with music, we make these demarcations. Mm -hmm. But if there's something that touches the soul, soul then it has to be owned immediately. That's beautiful and of course music is that language which can really unite multicultures together, isn't it? Uh, just moving on, something else that's really close to your heart is of course working with um, disadvantaged children and the role that music can play and we're just coming from a concert that you've um, delivered to these young children. It was full of lullabies, I noticed. Uh, can you tell us a bit about this whole science that, that there is between music and and these children who are, who are autistic or have other mental disorders alike? Uh, this for me is a personal pursuit. And again, uh, because of few incidents that came up in my life, in my, uh, in my journey as a performing musician, I've had the privilege of meeting children who are special. One particular incident when I finished a concert in Dubai and this young 10 year old boy mm -hmm. who came up to the stage and like it normally is I was surrounded by people who were telling me very nice things about what I did and the boy came up to me and he said you sang it all wrong is what he told me 
uh, it did give me a jerk, not because I was thinking of what he said, but because the people around me were all saying nice things and that's what <laughs> you want to hear always, that's what you get used to hearing. I had the occasion of meeting the same child a few days later because I stayed back when his mother came to me and said, I'm sorry that uh, he said this to you, but the thing is he, he only knows to speak the truth and that uh, hurt me further. And and then I asked her, what is it, why did he say I sang wrong? So she said, he plays a CD of yours at home in which you have sung the same composition that you sang in the Kriti in a different way. And um, that's why he said that. And when I played the CD and when I played the uh, recording of the concert, I did realize that I had made a mistake. But uh, this really affected me deeply because I realized how much all of us have forgotten honesty, mm -hmm. how much all of us have forgotten to say things that we perhaps need to. Mm -hmm. And uh, for performing artists like me, we get so used to hearing good things mm -hmm. that out of the blue when someone says something mm -hmm. honest, I don't even look at it if it's, it could be a possibility or a truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some say, uh, sake, I think the universe cons conspired and I kept meeting children of uh, special children, God's children as I call them. Um, and then I was very prompted to give them the music. I thought the music needed to reach mm -hmm. them more than uh, the fact that it's received by so, so many of us. Mm -hmm. And slowly, with the help of a few of my students, for the past few years, we have been just offering the music mm -hmm. to them, their instructors, their families. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if you see the families of children with special, mm -hmm. who are special, um, they are always trying to be part of our society. They want to be mm. inclusive in our society. So they have these milestones to meet. They're always constant into therapy, mm. uh, physiotherapy, uh, motor skills. They need to speech therapy. So both the children and their parents are always on a schedule. Mm. And there is perhaps nothing that can help them relax. Mm. And that's why I th think music can play a role. Mm. Even singing for them like you saw today, mm when we, we don't expect them to mm. do anything, just be there. Mm. You don't expect them to sing a song, repeat a song, or learn the song, or by heart the song. That's not what we sing mm. uh, for to them. Uh, but over a period of time, it has helped them relax. It has helped yeah. them feel light. Sure. It has helped the children calm down. Sure. And, and after a few um, experiences, when I try to read a bit and research, I realize that these children are very close to music, actually. Uh, and since they are in a space of their own, which we unfortunately are not, mm -hmm. when they listen to music or when they are in that space, they are able to give themselves completely to the art, much more mm -hmm. than any of us can even aspire to do. Mm -hmm. That's why it makes it a beautiful experience for us, for artists like me who are able to reach out. And I'm only thankful that the first boy in Dubai planted a seed in my mind and able to do what little I can do today. I'm sure there's many parents out there who are absolutely thankful for such work. And music essentially is just vibrations, isn't it? And, and whilst we speak in, the, in, the, in a spoken manner, I guess, like with words, these children who can't speak, they still speak communicating as well. And essentially music is just vibrations which are just having that impact on the mind, isn't it? Absolutely. Uh, because even for us, we don't understand every bit of the grammar. Mm. Even as musicians, it's difficult to dive into the depths or even fathom what the language means, what the swaras mean, what they're communicating, what is the effect of a raga. Mm. It's too deep an ocean, it's too wide for us to understand. So like you, sa like you say, music is just to enjoy. Mm. Uh, in spite of the fact that we study it, we learn it, mm. the basic purpose is to feel happy and to enjoy it because of the vibrations that are created. That's absolutely wonderful. So just before we finish off, uh, can I ask you, what's ahead for Bombay Jai Shri? Uh, what can we expect in the coming years? I don't know and I don't wish to know either. I just know that as long as I can, um, with the blessings of elders, my gurus, I wish to sing because it's a beautiful place that God has offered me and I, I hope I can continue for a very, very long time. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Jeshu, for joining us. We are truly blessed to have you here on our show, Aussie Indian TV. Thank you again. Pleasure.